The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. I would hope that everyone would align themselves with the Word of God because here's the fact. This whole thing has been about giving someone or pointing into the proper scriptures or even pointing to a scripture to empower someone to stand in a day where they need to stand. You see, because when it's necessary for you to stand, you could mean the freedom for a lot of people around you. But if you're not standing on the Word of God, the Word of God will not stand for you. And if that happens within your own power, you're not going to be able to stand at all. You see, there's a great facade, an illusion happening right now that makes you believe that the inhabitants of the world can stand without God's Word in their life. That's an illusion. One day, that entire illusion will fold in on itself. For those who thought that they could stand without the Lord's gospel in their hearts, His wisdom in their minds, the Spirit within their spirit, those who thought that they could do that without them, they're going to find themselves in a valley of no reasoning whatsoever. You know, if we look back into our own lives, really reflect on each and every situation that we can remember. We've all been shown a demonstration of how our lives could be. We've all seen, you know what, we all have a natural fear of something. And that natural fear is usually the very thing we attempt to avoid at all costs. And the Lord always shows His children just how bad things can get for them. All we need to do is be mindful of them. You know, He told the children of Israel, when they were delivered from Egypt, he told them, the day that you forget how I bought you out of Egypt, I'm paraphrasing, is the day you're going to go back into a type of captivity. That same statement is true for us. Pride normally creeps in when you think you've overcome all obstacles within your own power. When you begin to take for granted the deliverance you've been given, you see it's like this. If you forget how you were delivered, and that's not in your mind, you, you become bored with the blessings you have in your life, which means you're not very content with what you have in your life, and you find yourself on a track of seeking more and more and more, never knowing you were delivered from a position where you had nothing, where you lost everything, and God delivered you. But not only did He restore you, but He restored you in a way that you it would be harder for you to corrupt yourself. I wonder how many people ever saw that one coming. He works that way. Anyway, we are discussing some things that take place prior to the beast putting his kingdom up on earth. Now, it's a difficult task I have from what I do know and what I see in the word of God. It's a difficult task because it goes against the grain of most things. It does not seem likely. Nevertheless, it's happening anyway. And it's methodical in its nature. You guys have heard me use that word over and over again. It's very slow in how it was forming. It just so happens that things are speeding up greatly right now. The elite have begun to um, set their minds on survival more than a correction of the state of affairs. Have you guys noticed that no one really seems to be concerned about fixing anything? And when a problem arises in the global scene, no one's in a real rush to fix it. They just slap a band-aid on it and uh, spend their time doing other things. What should bother you is this. What are they spending their time on? They're spending a lot of time, but they're not fixing anything. And if you go back through policies and everything else, you're going to find that basically things have been untouched. What are they doing? How can a country... You know what? In fact, go and investigate the policies for yourself. Find out what was put in place, and you're going to find a great many things that really did matter were untouched. The only time they react and do something about any problem is when the media gets hold of a story and puts it out there on it. You see, these happenings are in their way. They have something else to do. Have you guys noticed that? I mean, it's pretty obvious once it's pointed out that they've been spending their time doing something else. All the meetings and the global meetings they've been having, all the demonstrations and the positioning, what have they been up to? You have Putin laughing with the President of the United States. 
the next day they're not talking to each other in the public eye. How can that be? And then they're laughing again three days later. These are things you don't hear about. They have a common interest. They know they can't take care of the multitudes of people who live now. So if they can sustain, if they can sustain the public and their illusion of a good life for a little bit longer, they will buy themselves some time to position themselves so that when a calamity comes without warning to the public, it will consume many of their lives. And you know what? Like I said before, forget about thinking these guys are going to go into their underground cities and dying. That's not the way it's going to happen. These same individuals who went into the caves, into the rocks, the mountains, and the dens, these same individuals will emerge as the beast with the beast system being unimpeded by any believers or opposing religions. You see, before the beast actually comes here, the idea of the beast must be established. What follows next is the conditioning of the surface of this planet. The world and its occupants must be conditioned. We talked many, many days. How many calamities will hit this earth? We already discussed the great number that no man can number who came out of great tribulation. Everybody's been talking about the book of Joel, Isaiah 24, Isaiah 34. A great many people have been talking about Matthew 24, Luke 21. You see, something will take place prior to the obvious thing. But there's one element they don't know about. And it's a spooky element, and it's hard to put your mind around. But here's something. Don't think of things as spooky. Because you know what? You know what scares me more than anything? If I were to have a type fear, I would be fearful of those things that I cannot see. Not the things that I can see. If I saw a monster jump out in front of my face, I'd probably tell him, please go somewhere else and let me enjoy my coffee. I'm being honest with you. I'm not frightened of bugs or anything else. But the most opposing enemy is the one that can charm you, beguile you, the one you don't see, the one that could sit at your dinner table, the one that could be your best friend. Anything else I can see, I can deal with. But you can't deal with an enemy who slivers into your life, causes you to begin to share life with you, and then wreaks havoc from the inside out. By the way, that's the way parasites operate. Parasites operate by destroying the host from the inside out. That's what they do. They do everything they can do to sliver in very discreetly. Then once inside, they begin to replicate themselves, just like individuals do inside the body of Christ. They sliver in under many guises. Then they begin to replicate themselves. In other words, they begin to talk to other people. And they turn a great many people against whatever body they're in. Then they go somewhere else and do it again. That's what they do. The other things that I may talk about shouldn't scare you at all. Number one, they can't touch you. They may look ugly and, and everything else, but they can't touch you. By the way, fallen angels of the worst kind take the most beautiful forms they can find. Just to let you know that. In fact, there are a great many documented finds that speak about beautiful women, beautiful men who were in fact the fallen angels, bronze-skinned individuals, no imperfections, so they're extremely appealing. Now I want you to think about something. Your flesh is rotten to the core. Your flesh is rotten to the core. Your flesh is a vehicle which contains your soul and your spirit, but your flesh is rotten to the core. Your flesh is full of sin. Your spirit is different if you belong to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but your flesh is rotten. It's full of lusts, full of pride, full of self-salvation and everything else. Now the enemy, being of the world, who inspired the world, knows everything about your flesh he needs to know. He can lure you if you operate in the flesh. This is why it's important not to walk in the flesh, but to walk in the spirit. Because the enemy knows everything about your flesh more than you do. He knows how to entice you. He knows how to do anything he needs to do to you to get you off your path. You cannot continue to walk in the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, you're walking in the world. You'll have fruit of the flesh. You'll accept sin and everything else, but most importantly, you'll be a friend of darkness when you walk in the flesh. Now, I'm telling you a truth. 
because it's time that a great many people gird themselves up in truth, the truth that Jesus Christ spoke about, not to simply walk in the world, having heard it, never doing it. That's not going to work. They can toy and play all day long, but it's their souls and their flesh that will be consumed in the end. Their souls and their flesh. You see, there are some very real dangers in this world, but they're only dangers for those who are outside, who are outside of the Savior. You know, today on Pastor Paul's show, I talked about energy, how they can measure energy. They can me measure if the Holy Spirit is within you or not, because you do, in fact, put off a different type of energy. In fact, it begins to permeate your entire body. It changes everything within you. Even your natural smell begins to change. Everything changes about you. But guess what? If you're faking it, they can tell that too. They know who's real and who's not. So you can't fool them either. You may be able to fool other people in the body of Christ because they have compassion, hope, and love in their hearts. And so they're not really going to be, uh, they're not going to look at you as someone to attempt to condemn, but they're going to be hopeful that we all make it. Just like a demon knows who is saved and who's not, so do the men and women who work for the fallen angels here on earth. They know who's saved and who's not. If you're saved, if you're really saved, demons know who you are too. But if you're not really saved, you're half walking something. You can do great demonstrations halfway. They're not going to know you. And if they don't know you, they won't recognize the authority within you. And if they don't recognize that authority within you, well, they can tear you to pieces. That happened, by the way, in the Bible. Demons beat a couple of the uh, people up. They got, uh, let me see, the expression is they were whooped. How about that? They were whooped. Now, for those of you who are walking, being real, who are pressing, who are wanting to have that confidence when that time arises, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. I have that confidence that you're going to get it. You're going to have that confidence because the Lord said, Blessed are those who thirst and mourn for righteousness, for they will be filled. Simple as that. You're going to get it. Those who are simply in the Bible, mingling with the body of Christ, just because it's something to do, you're not going to get it. You're going to find yourself in that dark situation with no protection. Hopefully at that time you'll say, Lord, Lord, please. But I, I can tell you, you're going to be beat up a lot. That's that hammer, whap, right over the noggin. So I would hope that we take this thing seriously right now. You know, I've been exposed to some unseen things. I've seen the lies. You know what? When people are talking about subject matter in the Bible, when they're talking about it, and when they begin to talk about other entities, I can hear the truth of it and the lies of it. The truth of it is that they're in the White House too. They don't have to hide themselves like you think. See, everybody's looking for a monster, and that's not how it works. All of them are subtle and very discreet. And you have to understand how this thing happened. Listen, when the fallen angels came, they made it with women. Because their children were neither angel nor human, they had no place in the heavens, nor did they have a place anywhere else. So when they died after 500 years, they became known as evil spirits. Those are your demons. You see, prior to the fallen angels coming to earth, there were no demons. There were no demons. There was Satan who fell to earth. And the one third he deceived, but those are angels, those are not demons. Now the Bible generalizes the word devils. It generalizes the word devil. But in each book, you can go back and look at the original meaning, they actually had names. But during the translation they took a great many of the names out because people would read it foolishly. Calling the name of a demon, and once you call their names, well, they're, they're going to come and see who called their names. So now we call them devils. You don't call them by their names, and yes, they had names. The only one in there that you know about is Legion, but all of them have names. Even the fallen angels have names. Now, the only reason it's safe to mention their names in, in a conversation or so forth is because they're bound. They can't do anything. But let me tell you, their children know who their parents are, but their children, the evil spirits on earth, are the lawless ones. They don't follow laws very well. They all know what the deal is, but they don't just like Leviathan. Did you guys know Leviathan is an actual demon, a powerful demon? Normally that same demon will occupy thousands of people at the same time. 
Behemoth became a demon. Did you guys know that? It occupies a great many people at the same time. Of all of them, Leviathan gives special operations a lot of trouble. Why? Because it identifies itself on many occasions. You see, there are still some missions where a person has to be a real Christian or they can't go on that mission. And those are very special missions. They found out that a person who is a real Christian can get close to ancient technology where another person would be consumed. These are facts. You know what? This is real. And you're going to know soon enough. Not many people pay attention, but there have been vehicles that have come from one dimension to this one and the vehicle broke down or something but on every single vehicle that they use there are incantations on that vehicle listen they cannot fly through the air without these incantations written on them I just want you to know that and they look like they're, they're actually they call it angel script the same language that um, they found some things in the desert many years ago speaking about some things they were they also had the incantations on them and when something has an incantation on it, it can go from this dimension to the other. Hitler found the same thing out. The United States found it out. Egypt buried theirs under concrete. Do you know right now there's something in Egypt? They poured concrete down one of the tunnels so that no human being could ever reach it. Why? Because it's turned on and it won't go off. So they covered it up to hide it from anybody so nobody will be able to reach that. That began before Project ISIS happened. Then it continued after it because they actually dug it up and found out it was too dangerous. Too dangerous. So you see, there are things in this world that it's good that a lot of people don't know these things. Either way, once these things are released and they're being released through technology, you know, here's something funny. In your computer system, there are in fact incantations on certain electronic components that allow them to do what they're doing and hardly anybody has a clue. There are in fact incantations on certain electronic components that allow them to do what they do. So you don't understand what you're holding in your hand when you're talking on the phone. You don't know what that is. You don't know about your computers or anything else, but I'm telling you now, physics don't quite apply to everything that happens inside of a computer. And you know what? Anybody with a doctor's in electronic engineering can tell you the same thing. Now, it's not possessed or anything. It's an incantation. Let me explain to you. You have regular physics, right, which governs most of the things you do, like gravity and, and um, momentum and all these other things, the speed of light, right? Physics. You have governing dynamics, which explains behaviors and things of that nature. You have quantitative physics. You have quantitative mathematics. You have theoretical physics. You have string theory. But above all of those, is something that defies all physics. Those take in incantations and they find these things on ancient technology and they found that by transferring what's in the incantations to a standard ordinary object, the matter begins to change like it's following instructions that were written on it. But see, a lot of that knowledge has been lost to mankind. For a long time, they've been fighting to dig these things up. Did you not know in the Ukraine Quite a few of those uh, artifacts exist. Quite a few won't turn off. Some of the ancient technology built a long time ago, before Noah, still exists. There are weapons in the ground that they can't move. They just basically declare these areas as national parks or something. But that these, these things activate in the presence of a certain type of enemy. Let me tell you what type of enemy. Well, they found out that in the presence of the Elohim, you know, Michael and Gabriel and so forth, these things activate. Do you not know that they're turning these things back on again? They were destroyed. But they're going to use these in the war against God in the end. You have to keep in your mind that Satan will go out and deceive the world to make war with God. First of all, let, you have to understand his mindset. He's bound for a thousand years. He can't do anything. The first thing he does when he gets out, when he's unbound, is goes out and deceives the world saying, I can win again. You know what that make you know what this guy's delusional. Satan has lost his brains. That's what has happened to Satan. He's lost it. Satan has lost it. Period. He's very smart. He's likely autistic. But the worst kind. Not my kind of autism. Because you know they actually diagnosed me with autism. 
Isn't that funny? Of course. Well, that's another. I'm going to talk to you parents out there about children with autism. Medicine is good and, and, and uh, things that, but listen, I've worked with a few children with autism. I have a nephew that's autistic. Well, it was autistic. And you know what? They have not been able to make a connection to open up the world to them. So they've not become sympathetic to the things around them. Now, if that can be connected within the child's mind, they begin to open up. That's what happens. Well, Lonnie, I, I tell you what, the reason I was, my focus in certain areas is well beyond the average. There are certain things that I don't need former training on. I just automatically know how to do, how to design. And I do a lot of design, and I can understand it. But I've told you guys before that uh, with electronics, I can visualize how the protons and electrons are interacting with each other. In other words, I can look at a circuit, and to me, it's like it's, I can see things moving. I can see how it works, a, a built-in knowledge, if you will. So I'm a, you know, but that's with a, most autistic children have one area where they can become extremely focused. Mine tends to flip-flop because I like art. I like electronic design. I like robotics. I do not, I, I loathe war. How ironic. I'm very good at understanding human emotions. Well, there, there are just several things. And you know what? They found this out while I was getting my education. They couldn't understand why, because some subjects, like, uh, I didn't like history at all. I didn't like it. You know why? Because I could, could never accept history. Now I know why. I just, I couldn't accept it. There are a few subjects I just could not accept. And nobody could explain it to me, and I, I just couldn't accept it. So anyway, I excel in certain areas, and certain areas I just absolutely do not excel in. I'm no good in those areas. My tell. But a lot of autistic children have a disconnect. They're not very empathetic with the with their environment. But all they need is a connect. I'm telling you right now, all they need is to make that connection. That's all they need. Anyway, enough about me. I'm a strange one. Nevertheless, I'm just like you all. I'm just a bit nosier. That's all. It's the only difference. I'm just a bit nosier. And it's not that I'm a smart guy. It has nothing to do with being smart. It's just that the Lord has, has given me gifts, and I use those gifts for his kingdom, of course, because, again, I do not like war. And every single time, my conscience wins out every single time. I've changed, declined positions, simply won't do other things. What's happening right now? I'll tell you what's happening right now. They're doing something. The leaders of the world are doing something other than preparing the public for what is to come. Now, Russia, here's it. it Russia tried. They tried their very best to warn everybody. You know, they did want a worldwide internet so that they could begin to warn everybody of what was coming. But the United States shut that down quickly. I mean, they really shut it down. I don't know if anybody has noticed, if you use Google Chrome, anybody use Google Chrome, there was a forced update to Google Chrome, to IE Explorer, to a few other internet browsers so that they can have absolute control over the kill switch. They want absolute control. They want 100% control of media feeds. In other words, if someone's going to tell you the truth about something, you're not Opera 2, Opera, Foxfire, all of them, any Mozilla-based product, every single last one of them. Now, hear me out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys something. Everybody who has endeavored to tell the public the truth, the global community the truth has died. They have died. You know, a lot of people think they know what really happened in Libya. Why we went in there and did what we did inside of Libya. But you know what? Someone was going to tell the truth. And so they died. The only one that they really apprehended, because this guy was terrible, was Saddam Hussein. I don't like war, but this guy had to go. He was putting people in meat grinders and everything else. I want you to think about, what did Gaddafi do? He would invite people there to have uh, their little shows and so forth there. They said he was terrible, right? They, that's what they said. They said it was terrible. He was getting a little bit too comfortable. He found out about some things concerning Europe, America, China, and some other folks. You know what he said? I'm going to let the world know about this. 
And they went in there and they got him. They went and got him. Debbie's going to tell about that too. But they went and got him. All these bankers, you guys, hear about uh, dying and so forth. Now listen, I said this before. Some of these guys are being murdered. But the other half are running the infrastructures underneath your feet. You'll never see them again. Sometimes when you get promoted to certain branches of the service, the only way to get promoted, promoted is to tell the world that you died, normally a suicide or something else. That is their insurance policy that you'll never resurface. Can you guys understand that? I know this is a bit uh, heinous of how they operate, but this is just how things operate. The only insurance a person can have is for them, it, once they announce that you're dead, you killed yourself or were murdered or something like that, committed suicide, a good one. They know that you're, you're not going to come back because you're effectively cut off from everything. And if you do show your face, well then you're, a, you're, you're you committed fraud of the greatest degree, in which case you'll be jailed and still go back to the same position you had on the ground. But a lot of these guys didn't commit anything. They just simply were promoted and they're going into underground structures. Now, a lot of people, you, listen, you don't have to believe me about the underground structure. Yeah, I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm just telling you that these things were in progress, they're in motion, they're happening, and it's not too many days until the sky changes. This is why I'm constantly asking, begging people, be real about your salvation. If there's any unclean thing in your life and you are aware it's unclean, please, do your best to get rid of it. If you're in one of those sticky situations you can't quite get out of, then you need to go in your secret prayer room and sincerely petition the Father to show you a way out. Then you need to go and confess it to a stranger that's not in your little group. Listen to me. Please he, hear my instruction. Go confess that thing to some strangers, someone that can keep accountability of you. Because once you release the fact that you're in this situation, Satan instantly has to start taking his hands off of it and you'll begin to think clearly. Go confess it to some strangers, more than one, so that that thing can be turned around. This is not the time to have anything unclean in your life. And you know what? I, listen, I'm not talking about drinking and smoking. That's not what I'm talking about. Some of us are in positions where we are perpetuating a lie. Some of us are in positions where we're into something we're covering up for somebody else. I'm talking about those things that can destroy someone other than yourself. Get out of them quickly. Get out. Get out of them. Don't tell anybody here. You go tell a stranger so they can have accountability. Those things you need to get out of. Stop joining into conversations where you're forced to agree with something that's against your conscience. Stop doing that. Don't do that. You know how when you're in a group discussion and somebody somebody will say, now, now something that's like, listen to me. Somebody will say, well, don't you agree with that? And you say, me, yeah. You say, yeah, for the sake of not letting the argument go sky high. A lot of people do this with politics. Now, how hard is it to say, I'm not going to comment about politics? That's not very hard at all. How hard is it to say, I don't talk about other people? How hard is that? How hard is it to avoid the very temptation you're asking for deliverance from? If anything offends you, cut it off right now. Porn is a good one. You know, the statistics in the military about porn is unbelievable. If you're addicted to porn or something like that, because the internet is right there and that stuff is free, then what you need to do is change your habits with the computer. When you're bored, don't sit in front of the computer. Go we'll turn it off. You need a hobby or something. You need to begin to change your habits and get away from those things. Get away from them. Because you know what porn is? Porn is feeding the lust of your flesh. And you know what lust is? Lust is something that you cannot quench. So it's going to keep coming back for it, coming back for it. Not to mention porn unleashes a hunger within you that will lead to worse things. It's going to lead to worse things. That's why you have to walk in the spirit, not the flesh. And listen, when the temptation comes on you, that's when you fight. Stop saying, like, stop saying I failed you, God. Stop saying that. You need to fight. When that temptation comes, you go and tell a stranger, you know what? I, I, I can't tell you what, but I'm addicted to something. And it's, it's just getting me. You know what? A secret is a temptation. Did you guys know that? Anything you keep secret is a temptation. You ever notice the Lord says, confess your 
faults one to another. You ever notice he said that? See, when you confess your faults one to another, what happens is somebody else has accountability. It unlocks something in your mind, and then you know this other person that you just confessed to can call you on what you just said. Checks and balances. Same way you don't rob a bank. You don't go and rob a bank when you need cash because you know you'll go to jail. Well, if you confess your faults one to another, you say, oh, I got a problem with this. Then when that problem arises or you're around that individual, they can call you on that problem and they help you out. But some people look at that offensively. Well, I don't need them helping me. Yes, you do. Or you would have solved it already. But see, a person addicted to porn has more than a lust for porn. They have another lust and another lust and another lust. That's part of being in your flesh. But God told Cain, you must master sin. Overcome your flesh. You know what? You're an overcomer. You don't wheeze out of things. You don't tell God to take it away. You yourselves have to have the initial desire. And the fact is this. Some people desire that porn out of their hearts. That's a fact. Whatever you do not, that's just like, uh, listen, you can only be tempted by something that resides in you. Even the Bible says we are drawn away and tempted by our own lust. We're drawn away and tempted by our own lust. God does not tempt us, nor can he be tempted. But we're drawn away by our own lust. No one can tempt me to stand on the, the cliff of the Grand Canyons and, and, and say, you know what, jump head first. To me, that's not a temptation. I don't desire to jump off of anything head first. I don't have that desire. They can't tempt you to do that either because you don't have the desire either, right? So you cannot be tempted to do that. I can't be tempted to stick my hand in a hornet's nest. Can you? Can you be tempted? Nobody can tempt me to do that. You know why? Because that would hurt. Nobody can tempt me to do that. You see, something has to reside in your heart for you to be tempted. Now, I'm telling you all these things because a great many people don't, you, you have no idea what it's like to stand in front of darkness. During the evening times when the sky is a purplish color and a turquoise color and a light pink color with shades of blue dancing within the clouds, people are going to say, oh, how beautiful. They're going to say this every evening. It's going to be like an every evening thing because it's going to be so pretty. But very few people will notice that even that sign is a sign of something so horrific that they couldn't possibly imagine beauty could be mixed with such deadly venom that will pour out over the earth. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to you from an operative standpoint tonight. You know, there's an urgency within me. There, there, there has been an urgency, but there's a greater urgency right now. Knowing what I know, I know that if a lot of people, if it were to come right now, they will be taken by surprise my heart on a daily basis, I on a daily basis, am doing everything, using every ability and talent, every piece of substance that the Lord has provided me with for his kingdom. Because you know what? Right now, nothing else matters but the work in the ministry. Nothing. There is nothing else right now that supersedes the work of the ministry. And you know why? Because it involves you directly. So yes, I am going to spend every single dime that I have to get those servers out there. The word has to reach a great many people. Before I even started this little server project years ago, and I was compelled to do it, the Lord continually tells me to set the table. Like right now, me speaking to you. I had no clue I'd be talking to you. I had no desire, really, to talk to anybody directly. But you know what happened? Is that I began to hear people misquote things and say the wrong thing in scripture so much it's almost like I had no choice but to reestablish some type of order to back those who were trying to get out the word like Pastor Paul when Angie introduced me to Pastor Paul and I heard him for the first time I said now there's someone who's trying to get the truth out there and then I'm you know doing your analysis I said well these people are not hearing what he's saying there were some in the chat room while Pastor Paul was saying something so vitally important, they were talking about something else. They weren't listening. And there were other people who had great forms, but they were saying nonsense. You see, the problem with the news is this. Men's plans change. God's prophecies never change.
they never change. So what is better to put out to the public? Men's plans or God's prophecy? I would rather spend my time on God's prophecy. Because, see, I have insight on a few things in his prophecies that apply directly to this time that we occupy now. As things begin to change, I'll be led to reveal more and more so that it supports the prophecies. Like that scripture that says, the seas and the waves roaring. Well, the seas and the waves are going to be roaring. Coastal cities will be in danger, all of them. Liquefaction is happening now on the East Coast, and the West Coast is going to face a type crumbling event. You see, as the ground gets dry, have you ever seen real dry dirt? And you can drop a rock in that real dry dirt and it cracks like an eggshell? This is what's happening to the West Coast. However, on the East Coast, there is a saturation effect taking place underneath the ground, deep in the ground. It's a saturation effect. You know, the telltale signs of this saturation effect are sinkholes that fill up with water. It's hard to see a sinkhole in the middle of a lake or something like that. It's easier to see a sinkhole that has been dried up. You're seeing both. And so a guy like me comes forward and says, listen, this is not only happening in this small, you know, three or four meter hole. This is happening under four states. Four states. I'm telling you now, there's still cautions about losing North and South Carolina, losing parts of Virginia and Georgia, losing Florida, all at the same time. Listen, can you imagine if that happened all at the same time? Let me give you let me give you a hint about something too. We need all of our soldiers back in America. Now I want you to ask yourself in the privacy of your own thoughts, why in the world do we need all our soldiers back in America? What in the world is going to happen? Not some of our soldiers. We need every able body back in America. I am not at liberty to expand on that subject. A couple weeks ago, when I was made aware of it, I couldn't, it was hard to ascertain that the conversation was taking place, Gary. It was very difficult to understand that they're actually discussing this now. They're actually discussing this. It, you know what, that's the equivalency of saying we have a year left on earth. That's about the equivalent of it. Now, I'm not saying we have a year left on earth. I'm just saying that's the equivalent in their language of saying we have a year left on earth. Everybody pack their bags before this time hits zero. In their language, they're going to seek protection. I told you guys before, you're going to notice a great many people no longer live on television. They'll have fake backgrounds. You won't see uh, snapshots of them or anything else. There are going to be more murders taking place of elites, which will just simply disappear. Because they are, in fact, going to hide themselves in the earth. They're going to hide themselves in the earth. I was trying to get a hold of Tanya today because... Uh, AEP, which is a power company in West Virginia, and uh, they span the Appalachian Mountains, have actually installed the switch transformers on the poles with the flick of one order. Any order comes out from the Pentagon, they can redirect power directly to the underground bases. It's set up. It'll be set up in Pennsylvania too, through Allegheny Power and a few other power companies. It will be set up in Tennessee. It will be set up in quite a few areas. Now, they have to have all these things in position before, I believe it's September of this year. The Internet's the same way. They have a total control mechanism over the Internet. You know, some people say, well, how can they put a switch on the Internet? Well, that's easy. All the corporate... Who do you think the corporations are? I, you know what? I want you guys to think about this. Who do you think runs this country? Who do you think runs the country? Do you really think the government runs the country? Or do you think the corporations run the country? Who has more power? Those who discuss the policies or those who are innovating people's tomorrows? You see, it's a big misconception. And people are point. I keep telling people that, oh, Obama is a stumbling block. That's what he is. He causes some to stumble due to his presence. He causes a type of ambition in others. But as a Christian, we shouldn't point at anybody for with the same measure we judge, we're going to be judged. 
we're judging before the time. Many, all he's established to do in a lot of Christians' uh, minds is make hatred rise, rise in their hearts. Now, you know, what's a sad thing for a Christian to have hate in their hearts. Something is wrong there. Who can be such a stumbling block to cause a Christian to hate? You know, when I see that, it, it that deeply saddens me. I know of all emotions, hate is the, is the one that's equivalent to murder. And you see, with a person with hate in their heart, they're hating Obama this much, not knowing who this individual is, what he puts up with, or anything else. They're not going to the kingdom because hate is in their hearts. They don't understand that hatred is like a cancer. You know what, I've been talking to you guys for a long time on COT. Not once has my tone ever been altered or changed. Is because I will not entertain any notion of any hatred in my heart. Ever. Most people say, you're the same person every day. And you know what my answer is? Who else am I supposed to be? Who else can I be but me? Who else can I be? But you know what? Everybody can be this way. This is why I do not agree with people saying, well, I woke up moody. Okay, to me, that's not an excuse. You woke up moody. That means you had no praise in your heart. That means you didn't even establish your day. You didn't even take the time to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I have another day to serve you, another day to make things right that I messed up the previous day. You, there's no thanks in your heart when you wake up moody. Now, I understand women are women, right? But listen, time is not on our side. And these people that say, well, you know, I got to work through. You don't have time to work through anything anymore. You need to make a decision. Some people have been working through a matter for their entire lives. No situation takes that long. When you open your eyes in the morning, you should think about praising your Father in heaven who allowed you to live in this day again. But here's the deal. He allows you to serve him again. You know what? Tomorrow, when I wake up tomorrow, if I wake up tomorrow, I can always do a better job than what I did today. And you know what? I think of every day like that. It never gets old. Every day I wake up, I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to perfect this, Lord. This is my desire. This is what I want to do. Lord, I want to do this, and I'm going to do it until my fingers fall off, but I'm going to do it. You see, I wake up with servitude on my heart when I go to sleep. There are sometimes I just simply do not like sleep at all. I'd rather be awake, and sometimes the Lord will honor that. He'll quicken my body so I can stay awake an extra three or four days. But a lot of people have developed a habit of saying, well, I'm just moody. Let me tell you something. Yes, your body's going to ache. You're going to have aches and pains and everything else. That has no, that has nothing to do with your soul. Your servitude for the sake of your brothers and sisters can outweigh any pain, any disability, any evil thing that has ever happened in your life. You see, when you start to think, when you realize, first of all, how much other people matter and that to serve Jesus, you serve your brothers and sisters, you, you begin to see, ooh, well, hmm. There's no way I can serve Christ and not serve my brothers and sisters, first of all. Because every good thing that I extend to them, I'm extending to the Father. That's why a lot of people are going to get it wrong. Because they think they can serve Christ, yet they can cut off everybody in their lives. That's not the case. But you know what? The evidence is the evidence. The Lord will quicken you to accomplish that. Back to the weird news. Yes, they are building arts. They have built them. They have a fleet of arcs in the ocean. You know what? The arcs that they build, these are military ships, by the way, international efforts. They are so big that they can't come. You know what? They have to be in water very, very deep. Each one can carry, I, I think now, I think, each one can carry up to 50,000 people on it. Now, who in the world is going to build something that big? Each one can submerge totally underwater. But they've been building them in the deep ocean. When you see them, you only see the top. It's a little tower, observation tower, but the majority of the ship is on the water. Now they built these because they know that the water levels are gonna become chaos. They know the deep ocean is gonna be the only safe place for a while. And wouldn't you know it, in the book of Daniel, it says he plants his tabernacles between the seas. Speaking about that man of perdition, he plants his tabernacles between the seas. You gotta tie these things in together so that you can begin to see parts of what the, what the truth is out there. And maybe you'll begin to feel just how close we are and why the enemy is falling down. He, he's trying to do everything he can to divide us and everything else. He's really working hard now. 
but hopefully I can share to you as to why all we can do is to ensure that we are in the Father's bosom. And the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ, and then He does the rest. He does the unbelievable things. He will um, keep us in those times. So that's what we have to do. He'll keep us. You know, I, I'm, I'm living proof that the Lord is just. He really is. But there is a, again, a tumultuous time coming that's taking shape right now. You guys remember about a month ago I said, I, you know, the news would begin to, you'd hear strange things in the news. And you know what, that time hasn't even, it hasn't hit yet. So when that hits, I'm wondering, here's what I don't want to happen. People get a clear insight of what the prophecies say. And then all of a sudden, because of the magnitude of the news that they hear, they, they begin to get um, off balance with things. I don't want that to happen to anybody. I don't want them to get off balance, but rather stay on focus with what's happening. You have to stay on focus. It's always good when you read the word for yourself and you see it for yourself because we are born with this skeptic nature. And so when we see the scriptures ourselves, not only can we visually confirm it, but internally, spiritually, the Lord can confirm it as well, which is most important. You see, we really shouldn't take everybody's word for everything. We really should investigate the scriptures for ourselves. Because where the Lord may speak to me one way through his scriptures and reveal certain things to me, he can reveal more things to you, which you can in turn share with the body of Christ. And we all grow and benefit from each other's labors. Not everybody benefiting from one man's labors, but everybody can benef benefit from everybody's labors. So that would be a wonderful thing. Now, again, we've been in this book of Revelation seeing what happens prior to the beast getting on earth, and it's not looking good so far, is it? It's not looking good at all. In fact, we have seen so far in the book of Revelation prior to the beast getting here, nothing is looking, nothing looks promising. We have a great earthquake. And you know what? That's one of the, in the sixth seal, the great earthquake in the sixth seal, the sun and the moon changing, the stars falling to earth. I'm going to talk about the stars falling to earth and tie it into some more scriptures because as I shared with you the other night, we have the sun, the moon, and the stars not showing their light or withdrawing their shining by reason of smoke, thick smoke, thick darkness upon the earth. It also says that um, the sun, the moon, and the stars will withdraw their shining when God is on Mount Zion. Again, that happens. The kings of the earth hide themselves in the mountains. The heavens depart as a scroll and it's rolled together. You know, we discussed this. Now it says a scroll and it's rolled together. Imagine you roll out a paper towel, two paper towels, one to the left and one to the right, and you begin to roll it together. That's what it's talking about, the heavens departing. Almost as if it's going to roll up into a bunch and then poof, it's gone. You know, there are a few scenarios that can cause that to happen. There are some that are way out there, some that you've never heard of, and of course, some that we're familiar with. We're gonna talk about that too more in depth. Of course, the 144K are sealed from the tribes of Israel. Please reference Revelation 14, three through four to understand who they are. And a great number that no man can number is found in heaven who came out of great tribulation. Now, Revelation, again, uses the word, and then after this happens, and then after this happens, and then after this happens. So we know that we can trust the order of Revelation. I know a lot of people would love to overlap and set it on top of each other, but the problem is this. Here's a problem. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Because many people think this. So let me give you an example. On the seventh seal, it says, when... When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in the heavens for about a space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer for the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before, did, ascended up, before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seventh angel 
which had the seven trumpets prepare them to prepare themselves to sound. Now this is the seventh seal preparing for the seven angels are being prepared to sound. So on the seventh seal, the angels get their trumpets. They're preparing to sound. The prayers of the saints is mixed is gone up to heaven. Is mixed with fire from the altar. That is cast to the earth. When the first angel sounds, there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. They were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Of course, we went over this. So on the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour, and the seven angels were given seven trumpets, and they prepared the sound. And then, of course, all of them began to sound. Now on the seventh trumpet, the mystery of God should be finished, and the beast comes on the scene. The war in heaven is taking place. This is when the actual beast comes on the scene. But here's something. You have most of your government organizations are very familiar with this. And a few other texts that support what's happening in here. They are preparing for revelation to come to fruition. They're preparing that. They know what's going to happen. They trust what's going to happen. They've always said that there's one thing they cannot overcome, and that's prophecy. They have to work around prophecy or work with it. They also find their way in prophecy. Over the course of time, a lot of people have tried to not trust in prophecy, only to find out that as every day passes, more and more revelation is revealed. And so you know what? As time does go on, most of us will have a good revelation of a great many things that are happening. But I tell you this, Jesus said the time is at hand regarding revelation. He said the time is at hand. That means it's happening. That means it's happening. There's always a foreshadowing of events to come. Now what you don't know about the world, when the sky rolls together, that's the same phenomenon that happens when they start up scientific experiments. I'm not going to name the one, but there are several, well not several, about three of them out there. They get the same effect where the atmosphere is consumed. It seems like all the life in the atmosphere is consumed all at once. The same effect can happen with men or it can happen with the passage according to the simulations or the passage of a close body to the earth. If a close body comes near earth, it can effectively suck the atmosphere right off the earth. Now that would be just terrible. That would be bad. If something came close enough to the earth to draw the atmosphere from the earth, which means it would also have to alter a great many properties of the earth. But if that were to happen, and according to the writings in Egypt by Josephus, according to the Native Americans, according to those who now occupy Asia, according to the individuals that lived in Russia, this already happened before. They said it was impossible to breathe. Impossible to breathe. It was a very bad time. So, knowing these, knowing that, we have other scrolls that also support the happenings in the sixth seal. That have, and listen, here's, here's one thing. It has nothing to do with the Bible, but they still document the sixth seal. They document the four angels, of course they call them the four mighty men, which expelled the Nephilim, holding back both fires and winds, so that nothing stirred upon the earth. They stated when that happened, the tribes of the earth would take flight. There is another text written in Mexico, etched in stone, that says the same thing. Yeah, the atmosphere was effectively, well, actually it burned off of Mars. You know what? And they saw that happen. For the life of me, I can't understand why they won't share this information with the public. That That's very harmless. But the atmosphere was burned off Mars and it was witnessed, meaning it didn't happen millions of years ago. You see, when they came up with carbon, with the carbon dating formula, carbon dating only works with biological material present. That's how you have to carbon date. But they lie about the age of the planets. They lied about it so they can make evolution fit. Evolution does not fit if you correct the carbon dating formula and process. And with the changes in the sun, radiocarbon dating, half-life of material is different because the sun's energy directly involves the chemical structure of most things. That's terrible. So what I'm saying is that when these things begin to unfold, which will happen, uh, some of these things are going to happen fairly quickly. 
but there are some unknown elements that people are going to deal with that they thought they'd never have to deal with before. This is going to consume the minds of many who are unaware. Here's a fact. There are little lights in the sky roaming around. There are things under your feet. They're being held back by their own admission, by a few admirals, their awareness. They're terrified at the thought of these things one day changing their mind saying it's time. But here's something you don't know. As lawless as they are, they always operate by some sort of protocol. Always. They won't deviate from the protocol. In other words, there's a time that they will have, and they know this. And they've been continually preparing for this time to do. In all the discoveries of Earth, they found this consistent mindset among, or I guess you could call it a mind, of all of them. Even in the kooky stories you hear, where people have been picked up and probed by these things, they all say the same thing. Even those who have been possessed by demons, they still say the same thing. There is a time when they'll be able to operate in full, but that time is not yet. And if we're not prepared for these things, if we think we have solved the entire thing and are no longer having our ears open to the Holy Spirit, having shut our ears full of our own wisdom, where we can't hear anything else, we're going to be sadly mistaken. We're going to be sadly mistaken. You know, that also happened to the Jews. They thought they, they really thought they had it all figured out, and then the Holocaust came. They really did. You see, the only people they convinced were themselves, and then they paid a price for that. We can read till our lips fall off, but until God gives a revelation to the entire body. Listen, God does not give revelation to one person. That's for any of us. He'll give it to the whole body. He will. He'll give it to the whole body. And to the whole body, it will ring true. Cer certain things are confusing, yes. They're going to remain that way until God gives revelation to the whole body. When he gives revelation to the whole body, the whole body will be aware of it. It rings true. That's when things begin to happen. When the entire body is given revelation of something, things begin to happen according to the revelation of that word. I have entertained the thought, 519 is talking about the seals and the trumpets and the vials aligning with each other. And I've entertained that thought too. And we'll all have different, you know what, we'll, in, 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 concerning ideology and details, we will have reached different conclusions. But I'm just one who does, I, see, I, I tend to take it line by line. We learn by, I learn by precepts. I also am inclusive with the rest of the books in the Bible that pertain to prophecy. And so I've entertained that thought, not to go too much in depth. But right now, we're just, what we're doing now is reading this line by line as he, according to how he got the dream. That's what we're doing right now. So we're not going into, you know, that, that depth of detail. But again, when the Lord gives revelation to the entire body, we'll likely entertain that thing he gave revelation to the entire body. We will likely do that. But what I'm talking about today is the great many things that we're not expecting to happen, like losing the East Coast. You see, here's a thought you can entertain, that large portions of America are about to be changed. That after the cataclysm, one of the nations will be in utter ruin. One of the heads were wounded to death. You know what those heads are? You know, the beast. The beast has seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns. Revelation tells us what the seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns are. There are seven specific nations or land masses of rule. There are ten appointed divisions or rule. There will be ten kings of those ten. One of the heads of the beast were as, as it were wounded to death. And the world marveled because it was healed from that deadly wound. I want you to think of this. If the heads are in fact the landmass of the nation, imagine a nation that fell and it was put back together again. Now that a person would marvel over. Let's just say America was utterly laid to waste and somehow it put itself back together again. Now wouldn't that be interesting? That would be interesting. But according to Daniel, and when Daniel gets into the kings and the nations, he begins to define just about everything. And then, of course, the Bible defines the rest of it. The, or Revelation defines the rest of it. Ezekiel demonstrates the land masses. But a great war is coming according to Isaiah 34. Prior to the stars falling to earth like figs from a tree shaken by mighty wind. And it's coming. 
You see, because the worst thing that could ever happen is if we think we have it figured out and something blindsides us. This is what is going to cause a lot of people to fall away from the faith. This is why scoffers and mockers will say, where is the promise of his coming? You know why? Because some people had it wrong. They had it wrong. They're going to be in trouble and they're going to be in the earth when the trouble begins and these scoffers and mockers are going to say, oh, where's your deliverance now? Just like they did to the Jews, flattering them. They're going to do it again and people won't be ready. and They're going to have to endure some things. That's why the Bible said, he that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. He that endures until the end. That means we're going to go through some things. And if we're not prepared for the unthinkable scenarios, we're fooling and deluding ourselves. If we look around in life and we see men with technology, if we think that's it, we're sadly mistaken. Because one day things are going to manifest that everybody thought was make-believe. Then their hearts are going to fail them for fear. That's not going to be good. Not going to be good at all. So this talk is to prepare you on what's coming before the beast. Oh, there is a critical danger of a, of a um, gamma ray burst. Well, there's a high potential of a few gamma ray bursts. Now, of course, yesterday we talked about this. If that were to hit the earth, you're looking at a microwave effect. Well, let's just say you're looking at a very bad effect. Now, it's so serious that most of the power companies have taken precautions against it, and they're doing a fast job of it. You see, they approve funding to prepare the nation to leak the uh, extra energy back into the earth. Anybody know about that funding they gave them? They've also enabled funding to switch power stations by another control mechanism, which means if something happens, they're going to divert power to the military bases. That's what they're going to do. In the Appalachian Mountains, that will be in uh, Bluefield, Virginia. That's where power will be diverted to. That's where the airfield comes out of the mountain itself. So it's a lot of things happening right now people can't quite understand. But I'm telling you now, the critters are coming back. Those things that walked in the ancient days are going to walk again. Don't worry about the form. They're, sure enough, they'll have different forms. But I'm telling you, they're going to walk again with the same ambitions and it's not going to be good because I told you before how society is today with the houses and the clothing and every it's already happened before it's been here before you know they're digging up after all these years they're digging at the bottom of pyramids finding Timex watches they're finding soda cans they have different names on dinosaur bones with shoe prints in them prosthetic limbs on other dinosaurs harnesses on them and so forth. These things drowned right there where they were with equipment attached to them, libraries upon libraries of how to train them and communicate with them. More pyramids being found with pictures inside of a society just like this, women with little sundresses on them, kids walking around in buildings all over the place, except their architecture was a little different. But it's been here before. And for the life of me, they will never, ever show the public this because it does not support evolution. See, they want you to believe that you came from a monkey. A monkey. But King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. Even in King Solomon's day, technology existed that allowed King Solomon to go all over the world. They call them Vimanas. Vimanas was nothing more than their version of an aircraft. That's it. But see, man is arrogant. And they have to perpetuate this lie called evolution. By the way, it's a theory of evolution. It can't be proven. It's a theory. So long as something is a theory, it's not a fact. It's a theory. But it's the best educated guess that they have. Yeah, so Papa, that's a, a Tesla did. But you see, when he declined to hand over everything, well, they had to get rid of him too. Plus, he was going to solve the power situation and the Rockefellers who were in oil and Chase Bank, who invested heavily in uh, electronics, and GE, who had invested heavily in electronics, said, no way, Jose. We're going to take that away from him. In fact, he found, you know, he didn't invent AC electricity. He found an old generator that was here long before, long before the time of times. He found a generator that still worked. Their technology was based a little differently than ours. Nevertheless, it was the same thing. They hide this from you. 
You see, by you understanding that this same society had existed long before this time, it changes the Bible, doesn't it? It changes the stories of old. It changes what society looked like before the days of Noah. It allows you to understand that the days of Noah were almost exactly like these days. The only difference is the fallen angels were in full occupation of the earth. They don't want to tell you about the giant bones that they found and they constantly teach people about dinosaurs, yet they'll never tell you about the giants that roam the earth. They won't even explain to you why those dinosaurs got so big. Did you ever notice back before the time of Noah, people lived quite a long time, right? Most lizards and fish will continue to grow for as long as they live. Well, back in that time, they lived an extraordinarily long time. How big could you get? They don't want to tell you that chimeras existed back then. That some of the depictions on the Egyptian walls of people walking around with bird heads, that was the pretty picture of what did exist. They didn't want to tell you that they were doing genetic experiments in Egypt. They don't want to tell you that all the pharaohs had elongated skulls and they don't have human DNA. They don't want to tell you that. They don't want to tell you that one of the pharaohs is actually Moses. They surely don't want you to know that because they don't want to prove that Moses ever existed. But he was one of the pharaohs. Did you guys know that? One of the pharaohs that they try to wipe all history out about, the Egyptians did this. You see, when Moses went back to his people, they tried to wipe out everything he built. He was one of the pharaohs, and he is well documented. I'm not going to tell you his name. You can find it yourself. He's very well documented. But he told them that there was only one God. Only one God. And see, they don't like people knowing that. A lot of people don't, not knowing what they're talking about, saying that Obama looks like a certain pharaoh, Akhenaten. That's what they say. He looked like Akhenaten, right? That's what they say. You know, Akhenaten would be a pretty good candidate for Moses, but they even lied about the interpretations. You see, Akhenaten was in contact with the Hebrews. Akhenaten went to go follow the Hebrews and eventually joined them. But he was cut off from everything in Egypt. Akhenaten was. Akhenaten was not born an Egyptian. But his parents were in fact Hebrew. That was Akhenaten. But they defaced Akhenaten in Egypt. That pharaoh. They kicked him out. And then he vanished and disappeared. Akhenaten is a pretty good candidate for Moses. And the tumultuous time in Egypt came when what? Akhenaten vanished. That's when the deliberation came for the Hebrews, according to Egyptian history. And so they removed, they struck his name from everything. They removed it, except there were certain tablets that were buried that retained the history of Akhenaten. Who, by the way, had a Hebrew name? I'm just saying. Go look it up yourself. They don't want you to know about these facts. You know, they've lied so much that there's no way they can tell the truth. It's bad when you have lied so much you can't tell the truth. Now that's bad. That's a bad position to be in. But I have first-hand knowledge of how deep some of these lies go, and there's no way they can tell the truth. If they told the truth, people would point at them and say, you're lying. You know, that's bad when you tell the truth in society, and society tells you you're lying. Yep, J.S., there are, you know what, there's a place in the Grand Canyons that if you entered a portion of that place in the Grand Canyons, you would get sick. In fact, no one's been able to penetrate it. You can look through the little hole and see giant bones that still have the skin on them. They're not mummified either. It's almost like they're in stasis. But that area is off limits now. They lied to you about the, the, the composition of the earth. They really lied to you about the composition of the earth. They surely lied to you about the moon and its composition. They lied to you about Mars and its composition. You see, the Mars story messed up. The Mars story messed up because one of the one of the probes out there started putting back the real data before they can get their little hands on it. And it was almost an atmospheric match between Earth and Mars. Anyway, we'll continue this conversation. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.